Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, Mr. President, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, as I accept the Nobel Prize for Peace in 2015, I must look back at how far our nation has come in the struggle for peace, justice, and brotherhood, a time when I was identified as a Negro, a time when Negroes were not afforded the same opportunities, positions in life, voting rights, equal housing, transportation, and even public restroom equality. A time when my brown skin and other people of color were considered less than by the majority. A time when civil rights were almost non-existent and our nation was divided and riots in the face of unjust laws broke out daily. It was during this time that I realized we must learn to live together or perish as fools. It was then that I began to have a dream, a dream that one day our great nation would rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Today in 2015, I accept this award as an African-American and an American, for I am no longer called a Negro. As I look around the streets, watch the news, and surf the internet, I can see the great impact that civil rights work, nonviolent protests, and the loss of many freedom writers and other activist lives has had on current laws and conditions. I can see my dream. No more whites only signs. No more segregated schools and restrooms. We even have a twice elected African American president, Mr. Barack Obama. I would like to say that we have overcome, but I cannot. We are far from a finished race. I cannot ignore the questionable killings of unarmed young African American men, from Mr. Trayvon Martin to most recently Mr. Michael Brown. I cannot ignore the disrespect shown to and the threats made under the life of our president, Mr. Barack Obama. I cannot ignore that while more opportunities are available for people of color, there's still the issue of unequal earnings for equal abilities. I cannot ignore America's involvement in foreign wars. I cannot ignore when white women tightly clutch their purses, when I, an elderly Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., enter an elevator. No, we have not overcome we are still in a very challenging race for peace, justice, and brotherhood. Peace and brotherhood is just over the mountain. I accept this award today with an abiding faith in America and an audacious faith in the future of mankind. Humanity will outlast hatred and senseless killings will be no more in America and in the Middle East. Our loyalties must transcend our race, our tribe, our class, and our nations. And this means we must develop a world perspective. I accept this award in faith that as the years pass, the hope of a secure and livable world, lines of disciplined nonconformists who are dedicated to justice, peace, and brotherhood. I accept this great award for those brave and dedicated righteous individuals who will ensure that future nonviolent peace work continues. And only then can the promised land be fully seen. I accept this award for all that it represents for the future. We as a nation shall still overcome.